Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with, as always, another 100% achievement and trophy guide with a full walkthrough, and this time we are getting it all in the rather surprisingly great adventure slash puzzle game, Die With Glory. Now the game was developed by Vessel Games, published by Chili Dog Interactive, and is available for a nice and easy £5.79 slash $6.99. So the premise of the story is, we play as Sigurd, a very commonly named Viking who is old and wants to reach the gates of Valhalla in the old afterlife there. So yeah, the whole job of the game is basically to just die in such brutal ways that we make it. Nice! But it's not as easy as it sounds, you can't just jump off a cliff or jump into lava 20,000 times, you've got to do it in unique ways. So we've got lots of puzzles and dialogues to smash out to be able to reach the pearly gates of the V. Now we do have different interpretations of the gates of V mind, so <laughs> I'll let you know I'll let you think what I mean there. So <laughs> achievements and trophies wise, it is very easy. 13 overall, which includes a few good story related ones, and there are missables, but you really do not need to go fully out of your way at all to obtain them. So overall we're looking at around 40 to 45 minutes to complete this. So with that being said then. Let us begin. So you can smash through any cutscenes just by pressing the A button or the uh, X button on the PlayStation there. And the first thing we're going to do is go directly to your left and you can see your axe right by this legendary Viking boat there. That's going to unlock us the first achievement. Then we're going to head over to the right and use your incredible no need for steroid Viking strength to smash down this tree. Again, everything we interact with is with the A button slash X button on PlayStation there. So just keep going right, and you're going to see like this little pop-up here, basically that's, you've got to press A, and then to avoid the tar, swing to the left, so just move to the left right there, and then it is as easy as that. If you do end up getting hit by the tar, you do die, but you will unlock an achievement anyway, and you've just got to do this section again. So the checkpoints are, as for the most part, and as usual in games like this, very, very uh, generous. So as soon as we see the uh, boss there at the top, he'll stop chucking it at us. And we've got a little bit of dialogue to just get through, and this will be the end of the sort of tutorial. So we're just going to keep smashing out the dialogue. The first um, dialogue options are all fine. And we get smashed right in the nougat there. Our fat ginger little friend desperately wants to get to the gates of Valhalla. So there we go. By the way, you will unlock an achievement here for dying for the very first time. For some reason, it did not pop up on my screenos. So, we're going to get another achievement here, and that is for waking up in the tavern. So, we didn't reach the gates of the V. Um, although, what the hell? What the hell, bro? You're flying! What in the goddamn pearly titty gate is this? Anyway, we're going to head to the right anyway. And, basically... This whole game is the premise of, do you want to hear a story, and we just reenact those stories. So, keep on heading to the right, and we're going to have to make a couple of dialogue options here, and it's basically just the first one, every time. So, as you'll be able to see, I saved Joss from certain death, and nothing much in fact. Now, you've got to be careful. You can't just keep spamming the A button, because there may be times that you will pick the wrong dialogue option. If that does happen, that's literally fine, because they'll just tell you that you're wrong, and you just have to press the other option dialogue option anyway. So when we're here, go onto the bridge and then press the A button to interact with the ham, basically. Whap your horn out. It's a big old horn. Doesn't look like he's got that big a horn down in his panties section there. But when you wait on the other side, the ham will break and we can now jump down. Somehow we don't die or break our back by falling, which is very nice. Head to the right and interact with the switch. And then head all the way to the left and interact with the other switch. But as soon as we do this, you need to run immediately to the right and drink the bottle in the wall next to the first switch. So run, run, run as fast as you can. Drink the bottle. You are a Viking ginger man. And then just happily wait here for just a second. Boulder will go past. That is good enough for us. So now what we're going to do is basically we're going to end it all. We are going to die. And we're going to be doing this 10 times. So, what you need to do, just go go on that little, sort of little lava pad, if you want to call it. 
and just don't press any other buttons because if you press the up button um, if you press up on the left stick sorry you'll actually start floating above and we're not trying to do that all we're trying to do is just uh, die that's what I'm after die boy ten times and then yeah happy day so just keep burning your ass off ginger pubes There we are then, that should now be 10 times. As soon as we do it the last time, there it is. So yeah, it takes about two minutes or so to get that out, but as soon as we die 10 times, now we can just immediately head to the left. We're not actually going to be doing this section, which is nice again. And just keep on heading to the left. Basically, with the boulder gone, there is now this spear that we can get out for our chubby little ginger viking friend here. Keep heading to the left and we're going to see a sleeping lazy dragon, which kind of, kind of reminds me of my own ex-missus. Uh, I'm just joking. I'm the sleeping lazy dragon butthole. Anyway, so just keep smashing through the dialogue right here again. Be careful. We need to interact with the dragon twice. So we blow our horn. <laughs> Blowing our horn. Wink, wink. That can mean two things too. <laughs> Anyway, the first time we do this, we are going to wake up the dragon, interact with him again. And he's like, yeah, come here, bitch, I want to die. Uh, smash the dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. Dragon has four eyes, six eyes. Weird. Choose the dialogue option, he's pathetic, let's go. And then that will end this level. By the way, who calls a dragon pathetic and lives to tell the tale? Or sees a dragon at all and lives to tell the tale? Love that realism in games, you know? But Vikings were hard mofos, weren't they? So when this dialogue option ends with our fairy weirdo here, uh, press Y to tell the story and go to the second option, which is I didn't help Joss there. And then choose the first option, which is nothing much in fact. Now, this is the route we're going for the achievements. You can choose, well, I killed him if you want, um, but that just brings out another story. It doesn't have any achievements in it, but again, you can go through that one if you so wish later on. So we're going to go all the way to the right, and we're just going to wait. And then Joss is going to somehow, even though we are smaller and we break our back, Joss actually dies from the tiny weenie fall. So, well, that stinks. So grab the switch on the left. Run to the right immediately, get the first switch, and then drink the bottle when it opens up there in the wall. Do that, and that should just be enough for the boulder to rush past us. Job done. Pick up the sword. Again, it's only the A button we're going to be using for the majority of the game, in case you haven't figured that one out by now. And head all the way to the left. Once again, we are going to be facing our fears of... Oh, well, actually, I suppose if you have no fear of death, no fear of death, then surely you have fear of nothing. So again, we're going to be interacting with this lazy butt snatch a couple of times. Whip your horny boy out. Interact with him for a third time. And it'll be the same dialogue as we've done just a few moments ago. Who has no emotion? 
That, that's probably not what a dragon sounds like. Again, he's pathetic. Let's go. And that ends this part of the level again. So as soon as we're done speaking to our flying pretty princess lady right now, go all the way to the right. This guy's going to talk to us. Choose the top option. This story, how I met Joss again. And then this basically begins the next area. By the way, all the areas and levels in this game are very small. So you sh shouldn't get lost as long as you follow in the video fine. So first things first, so immediately to your left there is a little bit of a mushroom. Pick that one up. Head towards the gate and when it opens immediately go back to the left. Now the reason we're doing that is the horse can run you over in one hit. Which is, yeah. So we're going to head up this first staircase right here. Now, by the way, um, you've got to use the right stick to uh, move the buttons where you want to go. If you've got a triple option like this, as you can see, I didn't mean to go down. So you've got to use the right stick to go onto the different options there. So go up, go up again, go up and make sure to use the hand icon with the bell and then immediately jump down to the right. And then you see where the B house the beehive even bee house stay roughly around to the right and an egg's gonna start falling down just make sure to catch this egg there it is i obviously missed the first time that is why there is a piece of white no i didn't just jizz my pants that was an egg there go to the left by the gate to grab the battery so that'll be an achievement and grabbing a battery and then we're going to head up again and head up once more until we get to this mixer. We need to interact with this mixer three times. So again, use the right stick to go up to the uh, magnifying glass there. And again, to do for the battery. And then for the mushroom. Didn't realize Vikings had it so easy with magic mushrooms. You want to get high? Blend it up and drink it. Nice! So we are heading all the way back down. Again, it can be quite confusing. Or especially if you press the A button too many times and you go into a direction you don't want to go. So just be wary of that. But we're heading all the way to the right into this house right now. And interact with the bird cage. Uh, basically we're going to interact with this... Yeah, it's not a bird, it's more of a weird creature thing. Don't worry about Chubby McGubby right here. He is not going to harm us. Uh, but what we need to do, we need to get upstairs. And there's only one way to do that. And that is wait until uh, Chubby McGubby right here turns the candle off. And it's dark and we can go out. So head outside. Go back in, and then as long as it's dark, immediately just go straight upstairs before he turns the candle on. If he turns the candle on and turns around, you'll just have to go back out and try that one again. So when we're upstairs, interact with the hand icon there. That'll pick up the key. And then we can just head out all the way left, and we are going for a suicide leap of faith, apparently. The worst leap of faith. There's no hay bale there, bro. And then head back in, and we're going to interact with the bird cage again. That gets rid of... Whatever the goddamn hell this is. And then bees are going to attack old Dewey McGooey right here. And he's off. So then, all he's going to do is keep running around the house for now. Well, at least he can get his sweat on. But we're going to head out. We're going to interact with the sword. So grab the sword and grab the rope, which is right next to it as well. See these two little stumpy bits of wood in the floor right there, just to the right? Interact with that. He's going to put the rope on. And then what he's going to do is actually jump over it. So just wait here for a second. Yep, we go. And then interact with the rope again as soon as this dialogue finishes. Come on. There we go. Interact with it again and this bit of green mushroom juice. So we're not actually going to get high. We're doing it for trickery. Off he flies. And then all you need to do then is interact with the knight with the sword. Again, be careful not to actually go in the house. And then choose, couldn't have said it better myself. The second option there. And then that sort of ends this part of the level. Like I said, if you do end up like going... <laughs> well, that's a good mace to the head there. And like I was saying, you know, if you do accidentally go up up a ladder or into another house, it literally makes no difference. It just literally saves you two or three seconds, which, hey, we all need in this day and age. So we'll get another achievement then. And we are going to go back to said castle. So talk to a big boy right here. Choose, of course. Here's what happened next. 
Okay, choose the second option, Shroomtown, after Joss's, Joss's death. Shroomtown definitely sounds like a, uh, a stoner's very, very happy place. Then choose the first option, there was Dan, we got along. Start the story, and we are back into it. Yo, bro, have you seen Shroomtown? It's all like, whoa. Etc, etc, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Anyway, so, Shroomtown, they only eat mushrooms. Which is why their eyes are all over the show. Go to the left and then you actually... This isn't automatic. You actually have to um, just jump to the left and then to the right. You know, very easy enough. But it is not an automatic thing. You've got to do it yourself until we get to the top here. Head to the right and then fall down. Again, somehow that does not break your back. Maybe because you are high as hell on shrooms. And you actually did break your back. But you can't feel the pain, which is nice right now. So that bit then is automatic. When we head to the right by the switch, we get electrocuted and we go again. But what we're going to do is head up. Make sure to grab the jar, the empty jar on the left hand side again. There we go. And now we can head all the way up the stairs. We're going to interact with the bell again. Interact with the bell, make it uh, quiver. Hmm. Especially if you touch the end of the bell as well. That, that I feared is... Uh, hmm. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> anyway, we're heading down, we're heading down, and we're going to pick up the battery, which is, there it is. So just underneath the switch there, make sure to pick the battery up. And this next bit is all automatic in terms of yourself coming through the portal. Right then, so now we're going to interact with the switch twice. Well, first time to put the battery in and the second time to actually open the gate. And then when we do that, we can actually let uh, go to the right and the horse with the little gnome on it. It can be free, so we're going to talk to the gnome. A little bit of dialogue is going to happen and then immediately, as soon as we can begin to move, head immediately to the left and go back up the stairs once. So as soon as you say, I'm leaving... As soon as you can, go straight to the left, as you can see there I died, and then just go up the stairs once, because again, you can fall off a big high castle and not die, but a horse touches you in the butt once, and you're dead. Interact with the beehive next to get a bee, uh, a jar full of bees, and then keep heading to the right, and we're going to talk to this uh, bard, or, or whatever this hell thing is right here. So choose, I'll get your strings if you give me the batteries there, which is the first dialogue option. Head to the left and we're going to be climbing up this drain pipe. And I really do wonder if there is a guy out there called Mr. Pipe, first name Dwayne. That's got to be hilarious if that's true. Uh, so, so pick up this rope from Mr. Dwayne Pipe. And then speak to the bard again. Basically it's just going to be the first dialogue option, which basically says, I got you your noose. Oh, I mean the rope. Sorry. And here they are. Give me the battery. Spank your hairy crutch, buddy. Right. Now what we can do is interact with the switch, which was directly to the left of the bard there. And that'll open that. That basically opens up the right gate. And we're going to head out of it now. It's a very beautiful looking game, this as well, mate. Very, very nice. We're going to get struck again. Which, again, you get touched in the butt by a horse. Death. Electrocuted twice. No problems. Head towards the portal, and then head towards yourself on the left there. All I can think is the Spider-Man meme right here. And give him the battery, or give you the battery, or give, give whatever you are. Head back towards the portal, that'll give us another achievement. And then just head to the right. We're going to interact with um, Big Tub McGee right here. And make sure to choose leave, the top option, leave. And then make sure to scroll across and give him the jar of bees. That's going to pop it open. That's going to... He's covered in armor, so I don't know what he's scared of bees for. But make sure to pick up this sword right here. Again, with a hand icon, of course. And then use it on the knight. And then choose it. Couldn't have said it better myself again. And he's going to shove the mace so far up our ass that... Well, <laughs> that happens. We become a ghost sperm and we're off to the pearly gate of the V again. Defeated by hamsters. I 
I'm sure you understand. So when we're done talking to our flying fairy princess, is that a horse at the bar? Hmm, anyway, head to the right, and the next story we're going to be telling, choose the top option. I tried my best, but he grew up hamless. Which is nice. And this is basically the jungle temple section next. Please. So first things first, interact with this egg that's right in front of us twice. Again, using the right stick to go down to the said option. So we need to interact with it once to open it up and we'll need to interact with it again to pick it up. The, I think it's called, what is it? A, a Jupacabra or Chakarabra, I don't bloody know. Or something like that. Anyway, we're gonna speak to the wizard, which is the guy on the right here. And there is a certain uh, way of dialogue that we need to be speaking. So be very careful not to just keep spamming the A button. Speak with him again, though, and this is where it starts. And what we need to pick are... Number two, are you scared of my bravery? Number one, I'm just healthy and curious. <laughs> Not by curious. Number one, oh, so you have an axe in your stiff. I, I mean stuff. <laughs> Number two, I hope it's not cursed or something. If your stiffy is cursed, then goddamn, I feel sorry for you. Anyway, so that should be enough to get us the magnet right there. Now what we can do is head up. Up the steps, so we need to be doing a little bit of cooking. Uh, grab the hand icon there on the right. Make sure it's on the right, and then press the A button again so that we can swing over. Hand icon, grab the carrot, and then just um, walk up to the tree. That'll sort of push it down automatically. Again, no steroid strength when you're a Viking. You're just massively and strong automatically. Pick up the leaves and then start heading towards the right. So again, just keep clicking the A button to be able to jump over to the next one. But be careful, if you end up just drowning, you end up uh, just going back to the beginning of this little section anyway. So it makes no difference, but we're going to climb up. Um, pick up the fishing rope, uh, fishing rod even, that gives us another achievement. Smelly fishy. And don't go back down the ladder, we actually need to go into this little cabin hut right here. But I'll show you what happens when we drown anyway. Nothing. Uh, pick up the bread. And then go to the very left hand side rope as well. And interact with that. There we go. That'll get this sort of animal chupacabra thing down. And then interact with the crow outside three times. And make sure then to pick up the fish. Which we should do. Now interact with the chupacabra thing right there. Uh, make sure to pick him up so he's in your inventory in the top right hand corner. Then we can head back down and go back to the left onto dry, non drowny land. So when you finally get to the other side, just head all the way to the left. Ignoring Dude Meister 1 and 2, ignoring the steps, all the way to the left, a little bit of dialogue is going to happen, and then what we can do is just interact with the can in the water right there, and we're going to fish that bad boy out. <laughs> How is a can a bad boy? Uh, I don't know. Right, so now we're going to actually head back upstairs, so do that, now we're going to interact with the big soup chili bowl. So use the very left hand icon, which is the carrot. Then use the can, and then use the bread. Uh, flick to the left again to make sure to use the animal. Because as you can see, it, it automatically points you to go into the right, which you don't need. Now we've got this big <laughs> rabies, rabid, goddamn, beautifully cute, horrid looking creature. <laughs> anyway, we've managed to grow that. This bit's automatic, it basically ends the level. Damn you, bro. Why are you shooting me for, honey? Yeah, by the way, didn't that massive Jupacabra thing just... Kind of looks like uh, I'm getting rid of you to get a smaller pet. No, you're not. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> Stuck with him forever. 
Um, once we're back in the tavern, head back to the right. Obviously, it's going to be another story, and this time I'm going to choose the top option. Old Captain Kurt picked up the poor feller. Picked up the poor feller. And now we are on to basically the longest section of the game. It's only a couple of minutes more, but it is one. It is the Sky Battle. We're going to head up the ladder, head up the next ladder, and then head up to the ship. Then once we are at the top, if we can head into the cabin, again by using the arrow button there, and then just interact with the magnifying glass. Basically, it's a locked chest, and we need to find the key. So we're going to head out, and we're going to talk to old Gat and Kirk. And again, certain dialogue options here, so make sure not to spam the A button, slash X button, when we talk to old Cap. So don't accidentally go back in, as I that is so easy to do, though, with options like that. So, first one, second option. But your life is so intradasting. And then what happened? And where was the key? So basically it's 2112 one, because now we're going to choose how's that stupid. Now that we are done with old Cap Kirk, what we can do is just head past the captain on the right head down the ladder and head into the next cabin and just interact with the hand icon to grab the key so there we go now we can actually head back up into the cabin where Cap Kirk is and what we're going to do then is interact with the key and what is he hiding? an empty dotty bowl which you can get for 50p in Asda's right okay right so from here we're going to keep heading to the right and we're going to head into the next cabin all the way on the right again. Interact with the hand icon to get the empty ale mug as well. And then what we're going to do is be heading down this ladder now. So you'll see our Jupacabra friend right here. He's not going to hurt you, so don't worry. He looks like he wants to get on all fours and do it, but you don't. So when he goes to the right, head down the ladder. Wait until he heads back to the left, and then we can head up and go to the right. So do that, as soon as he goes, there we go. Up to the right, uh, grab the fire extinguisher, and then what you can do is actually use the fire extinguisher on our Jupacabra related right friend right there. Jupacabra, by the way, I'm sure is just a made up thing from South Park, but I'm sticking with it because it's hilarious. So go down to the right here, don't go down the ladder yet, sorry, that was my mistake. We're gonna be um, interacting the ale mug to get a full picture of ale. I don't know where you're holding that. Go down and you can interact with both items here, which is the porridge and the cannonball. And then we're going to be heading all the way to the left. So again, don't go up. Again, that was another mistake from me. Apologies. Uh, we can't actually grab that second cannonball yet either. So go past the two people here and just pick up this item. And then now we can speak to the two people, which I'm going to call Timmy and Tumu. And I don't know why. So once we're done here, what we're going to do is head back back up and go to where we found the porridge a little bit earlier on so not on this floor we're going up to the next one basically the captain wants some breakfast but he's too goddamn lazy to get it himself fair enough so we got to do it all for him so what you need to do you need to interact with the milk first of course because you can't put porridge in milk because that just ruins the milk to be honest there we go so this is hey honey this is what vikings had to do they had to eat as well you know and it was porridge and beer, and it was nothing else. Maybe the flesh of their enemies as well. Yeah, manly men and women. Anyway, once we've got the bowl full of porridge, now we can head back up. And what we're doing is interacting with this strange thing in the middle. That basically completes it. Then we're going to the left, up the ladder, and then interacting with the captain, giving him his porridge, and then giving him the burr as well. And now he's going to be off his nut after a beer and he's going to go for a cheeky little nappy nap which is most of us in real life do so when he's doing that head up the ladder on the left and put the cannonball into the cannon because now we are going to be attacked so just head down a uh, little bit of dialogue is going to happen and then we're going to go left into the cabin to go and speak to the sleeping captain again don't know how that works out but apparently it gives us something there we go, so we've got an idea, that ding and the big white teeth. 
through the ginger beard there. So we're going to head back down below deck and head back down the ladder again and head down the ladder again. And on the right there, you can just see the second cannonball. So go ahead and pick that up again. We couldn't pick that up earlier. That's why we left it there. So head all the way to the left again now. And then when once we've spoken to Timmy and Tumu right here, or Timon and Timon and Pu T Timon and Pumba. That's that's a better name. They look more Timon and Pumberish to be honest. Anyway, when you're done heading talking to them, head to the right, head up the ladder, go right now, and then we're gonna find a gear right here. Mr. Mother McFleer. Hmm, damn it. Anyway, down to the left. Basically there's going to be it's the tiniest little puzzle, but put the red um, gear on there, interact with these coloured ones, and what you need then is you need to interact with them in order. So first, it's green, which is the bottom left. Yep. So green, bottom left. Yellow, which is top right. Then white, which is bottom right. And then violet, which is the top one. And then blue, which is the only bottom one left. So you have to do it in that particular order to get all five gears working and then interact with the red gear and now Schnitt is about to schnit the fan as soon as we talk to Timon and Pumba there gives us another gear we can now head on all the way back up to the top So when we're up, we're heading to the right, going all the way to the right until we interact with Lady Afro there. So you can speak there if you want, but um, it's just yeah, kind of weird bit of dialogue. Nothing happens. You've got to give her the gear, and she's going to fix that. Job's done. Interact with the cannon, and then interact with it again. That's going to put the cannonball in the cannon. Ball in the hole, and we're going to shoot our load out a little bit later on. But for now, head back down to the left. We need to speak to Mr. Handsome Balls right here. He's just going to tell us to basically climb up the long mast ladder now. So that is exactly what we're going to do. So this one takes a little <laughs> about 20 seconds. So when we are at the top then, interact with the telescope. Of course, the hand icon. And then use the telescope icon again. Obviously, I uh, ended up climbing all the way back down, which wasted a good 20, 30 seconds of climbing down and climbing back up. That's a pain in the butthole. But once we've done with that, we are basically now going to start the big old battle. So we can climb on down, keep on climbing, keep on climbing. Stay in the middle right here. We basically need to interact with this special weird device in the middle. It's basically a shield protector. So as soon as the icon comes up, then just press the A button to get a shield around us. So right about now then, interact with it. That protects us for a little bit, but we need to go to the right, climb up the ladder. Uh, basically, we're going up the ladder again to shoot them with our first cannibal. So this is where we're going to shoot our load off. So as soon as they're done shooting theirs... Then we can interact with the cannon, and our balls will be empty. <laughs> anyway, we can jump straight back down to the left. Stay in the middle here, right next to this um, weird device-ass thing. And then the same sort of thing is going to happen. So you're going to wait until the icon appears, and then we can interact with it. So right about now, there it is. This time we're going to be using the left side cannon, where Mr. Handsome Balls is. I don't know why I'm calling him that, but that's fine with me. So head up, go up the ladder right here, and interact with the cannon again. As soon as they stop shooting, they load off. Yeah, it smells funny. Your balls smell funny. Anyway, there you go. Interact with the cannon. You've shot your load. Now both our balls are empty. So head back down. And we're going to head down once again. They're basically going to come underneath us now. It's so many puns. It's hilarious. But anyway, they are underneath us. And we're going to have to blow our balls in their face to get them away. So head down, head down. Luckily, we have Dragon, who is our friend, even though we wanted to kill him earlier. 
Thanks, buddy. Anyway, still go to the left, interact with the fire, because we need to put this fire out so Timon and Pumbaa can live, and the ship doesn't blow up, etc. And then we're going to be heading all the way back to the up. And now what we need to do is get our non-steroid Viking strength out to destroy two enemies. The first one's going to jump up where Captain Kirk was, so go to the left and up the ladder. Kirk's still sleeping, by the way. And then just interact with him, and we're going to punch him square in the nuts. So this vampire thing's going to come out now, so we grab the axe, which is directed by Mr. Handsome Balls and Mrs. Afro. And then this vampire weird thing is going to appear, then we just interact with him. Not the ladder, of course. Interact with him. And that basically ends this level. And we've got one more tiny one to do, and that's the end of the game. <laughs> you got squashed. There were consequences. You are victorious, but that was... So once she is done talking, head to the right again, she's going to disrupt us. Now choose the second option, armies who fought each other. And then the top option, stroke those pointed, pointy-eared weaklings. Genuinely thought they weren't about something else then, but hey, that's, that's just, hey, that's your mind. It's not the mouth it comes out of, it's the mind that it goes into. <laughs> anyway, very short section this is, so we are basically now about two and a half minutes away from completing the game or getting the, all of the achievements. So head to the right, we need to be picking up a few items. The first things first, pick up the bucket on the floor and the hammer which is on the right there. Then interact with the well to get a bucket full of water. Then use it on the fire to be able to pick up the uh, tongs, the things yeah, right there. Head all the way to the left, past Goatee McGoatface, and then interact with it to pick up another item there. Then interact with the next bit to get the candle, and then head all the way back to the right, ignoring the sword for now. So you should have three items there in your inventory, as you can see in the top right-hand corner. Head up the ladder, and then interact with the catapult three times. So there's once, there's a second time. And there's a third time. That's going to unlock us the 12th out of 13 achievements for Is That A Boyd? Is It A Plane? And then we can head back down. Now, you can die with these arrows, but we basically need to be picking up eight arrows now to finish the game. So, yeah, just keep picking up the arrows. Try, you know, you don't know where they're going to come from, so you may die, you may not. It's fine. Like I said, if you do die, then nothing happens. You just start from the same place. You'll get a message saying that should be enough arrows, so then we can go over to the sword in the middle with the ice bit, keep uh, spamming the A button on the arrows, and get the candles out. That should be enough then to get out the sword of destiny. So as the vampire turns up, interact with him once, and that will be it. So there is quite a bit of the game left to go, but that should be that for all achievements. So you should now have 13 out of 13 achievements. So I just want to say thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. Hope the game, I hope you enjoyed the game and hope the guide helped. If it did, don't forget to like, leave a comment, subscribe and share with a friend. Don't forget to check me out on all my socials. I'm on Twitter, Instagram and Patreon as well. I would really appreciate you checking those out. Uh, big shout out, by the way, to TimG84 and Chance Band. Again, sorry, I keep butchering it, man. And all my other Patreon supporters. But that's it. I will see you in the next one. Guys and gals, big love.